Okay, uh, Trevor asked Pastor Steve, he says, um, well, I didn't see if it was a male or female, but they say, uh, I recently came across a minister who does not believe in the Trinity. His reasoning is that John 5, 7 was added and not in the original text. Can you expound on that, uh, John 5, 7? Well, John, uh, 1 John 5, 7 is, is what he's talking about. Okay. And uh, 1 John 5, 7 is not the passage that, that proves the Trinity. You know, it's, it, it is one passage that speaks about it, and what he's talking about is uh, 1 John 5, 7 out of the King James or New King James, and this is what it says. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. And um, in more modern translations, what happens is it cuts off uh, in the middle of verse 7 and says there are three that bear witness and then it uh, begins again in the middle of verse 8, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. And, and so one passage is a, a great one for, uh, for uh, Trinitarian uses, and um, if you take the passage out, you still have a Trinitarian statement there, uh, but it's, it's not as good as the previous one. And uh, the idea that... Um, that's being dealt with this uh, in this passage where he's talking about um, it was added later. I don't know that it was added later. And um, if your pastor does his study, um, he doesn't know it either. Uh, because Why is it contested? Um, Why it, do they say that? It's contested because in most of the manuscripts, it's not found there. Okay. And so it's only found, uh, the passage is only found in 400 manuscripts in the first place. So this is like so, that in the Mark thing? Yeah, okay. it's, like, it's like that kind of thing. And so we have uh, 5, 000, over 5,000 manuscripts, almost 6,000 Greek manuscripts. And of the 6,000, there's about 400 that, that have 1 John 5 in it in the first place. And out of those, there's, there's uh, very few that um, have uh, 1 John 5, 7. But it's quoted by guys. And so a couple of guys, I got it in my notes right here. It's quoted by Tertullian. He's a church father in Against Praxius. That's the title of the, of the treatise that he wrote um, in about 208 AD. It's quoted twice by Cyprian, um, in, uh, who lived right around 200 AD. And um, it's quoted in the unity of the church uh, also. And so you have... A uh, number of passages. How do you know that? Is that in your study Bible or what? In your notes? No, I go and I go and look it up. I have the church fathers. Up, so. Yeah, I chase them down. There. All right. And actually, there's a whole there. There's a whole bunch of other church fathers that that refer to this, you know, down through the uh, down through history. The reason I I use these guys is because these guys come through the you know before the earliest texts that leave the passage out. Right. And so um, you have you have some Bibles that are based on. Uh, Codex Sinaiticus, uh, Codex Vaticanus, and Codex Alexandrinus, and um, those are are in place right around 350 um, A.D. to 450 A.D. And all the quotes that I'm giving you come from 150 years before that. And so these guys have a Bible that has it in it. Right. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, but I never use this. Uh, to teach the Trinity, right. you know, because I don't need to. Yeah. So even, even if it's there or not, it doesn't matter. Trinity is in, in, yeah. in the Bible all over the place. Yeah. This is this is what this is what the Trinity consists of. The Bible says that there is one God, one and only one God, and uh, you can go straight through the Bible on that. There's there, there's not a passage that uh, talks about um, more than one God unless we're talking about false gods. So there's one and only only one God, and then you have three guys in the Bible that are called God. And it's the Father. Nobody usually argue, argues about the Father being God. <clears throat> Jesus is called God, and he's just flat out called God. So, you know, my, uh, the classic passage, everybody knows this. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And um, the Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, uh, through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So that says that the Word is... God, the Word is the Creator, and then it says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Later on, in uh, first, uh, in John uh, one chapter verse fourteen, and it's talking about Jesus. So he's flat out called God, and he's uh, flat out identified 
as being with the Father. Um, literally, it says the word was with the God, and God was the word, is what it literally says in Greek. And so um, you have him alongside the Father, and yet being God, and there's only one God. <clears throat> you have the same thing with the Holy Spirit later on, and I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to belabor that whole thing. I'll, uh, if you want verses on that, I can go through and, and give them to you. But basically, what you have in the Bible is you have three guys who are called God. There's only one God, and so the three are one are the one God. And so guys come up with ideas that I, like, well, maybe you know when God wants to be Jesus, he puts on a Jesus suit, and when he wants to be the Father, he puts on a Father suit, and when he wants to be the Holy Spirit, he puts on a Dove suit or whatever. And, and so that's called modalism. That's the idea that God morphs into something else, uh, into another form when, when he reveals himself as Jesus. The problem with that is that you have all three of them on the same page. And so uh, you, you have a number of places. Jesus is on the Mount of the Transfiguration and the Father is speaking out of the cloud, for example, and saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Uh, Jesus is getting baptized and the Father is speaking from heaven saying, uh, you know, uh, this is my beloved son, and then the Holy Spirit's coming down in the form of a dove and alighting upon Jesus. And so you have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all there. They're obviously separate, and, um, and yet the Bible says that each one of them is God and that they are all together the one true God. And so that's where the doctrine of the Trinity comes from. It doesn't come from 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And so, uh, you know, again... Um, it's, this is a disputed passage, and because it's a disputed passage, I just don't use it. I use all the other passages. Right. Yeah. One of the cool things about the Bible is that it's not, um, it, you know, it's it, it's one of those it, it's one of those books where um, important doctrines are taught over and over and over again. And um, I uh, one of my one of my favorite teachers is Chuck Missler, and he said it's like a hologram. So. Uh, it's it's not like an analog picture. An analog picture is where you where you take a picture and put it on on two dimensional paper, basically. Um, and if you take and cut a little bit out of a out of a picture, you've lost all the information. Um, but if you're talking about a hologram, if you take if you take some of the information out of a hologram, you haven't lost it. Right. Basically, what's happened is you you've lost the resolution. It's it, it's not it, it's not as clear. Uh, but it's all still there. Yeah. And so uh, with a hologram, you start taking away information, and, and what it does is it kind of fades. But, it, but when you're talking about all the major doctrines of the Bible, they're all throughout Scripture. They're not confined to one verse. And that's you know, um, a pastor who thinks that the Trinity is based on 1 John 5, 7 is mistaken. Yeah. So. All right, there you go, Trevia. Sorry for mispronouncing your name. My text said Trevor, but as Trevia. So thanks for posting today. Appreciate you watching the show.